Praise the Lord. You are welcome once again to our weekly webcast. We have not forgotten, for the past four episodes, we have been adding a topic on the broad and the narrow way. The broad and narrow way. Today, we are concluding it by, by having it in part five. And the subtopic I will be handling today is a timely advice. A timely advice. Uh, as I said in earlier episodes, Jesus is the one that has been talking the scripture we are, we've read. And then uh, what did he say? He said there are two gates leading to two ways which end in two destinations. The first one is the broad gate that leads to the broad road and ends in destruction. And because it is an easy road, many people, I told you most people on earth and in the church, they are found on the way. The second one is the straight gate, which leads, which enters into the, the narrow road and ends in eternity. And because it's a very hard way, very few people, even among born again Christians, are found there. Without wasting time, I'll be concluding this great topic by looking at the timely advice that Jesus gave us. Luke chapter 13, verse 4. It says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter, but will not be able. Praise the Lord. The Bible here enjoins us to strive to enter which means, number one, it is possible to enter. And number two, it is your choice. Hallelujah. It is possible to enter the straight gate and travel on the narrow road or narrow way if one will employ all his God-given power and receive grace from above. God will regularly give grace to those who are striving. The problem is that many people, they think it is impossible to live a completely holy life on earth. They think it's of no use trying. Maybe they have tried in the past and they have failed. So they stop trying. They think it is actually impossible to live without sin. And they have set you to low Christian life and the belief is too hard and that nobody can make it. On the other hand, they are striving to make money. They are striving to become important in things of this world. They are striving to be noticed. They are striving to have political posts. They are striving to have a family and to have you know, a good job and a good retirement plan. They are striving to build houses. But the most important thing in their life, which they should strive for, that is to make heaven, they relegate to the background. They say it's only God that knows who will be saved. No, beloved. The one who commanded us to be striving is waiting for you to come and receive grace for the journey. He knows you cannot do it in your own flesh. He has provided the means of grace that will help you and assist you in making it. Now, the question is, how do you strive? How do you strive? Since the, uh, that scripture says, strive to enter in. I'm going to tell you 13 ways to strive to enter in at the straight gate and to travel on the narrow way. Praise the Lord. Number one. You enter, you strive by having a genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Beloved, ensure that you are genuinely born again and that your salvation is still intact. It's very important. It's very, very basic to traveling 
on the narrow way. Don't just be a member of a church. Don't just play church. In most churches, what you have is mixed multitudes. Most of them, I said, they were not born again. Or they were once born again, but they have crossed over to the broad road. Repent of your sins. Invite Jesus into your heart by faith. Pray, pray until something happens in your heart. And uh, these are the two uh, evidences of genuine salvation. Number one, a changed life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Number two, evidence of genuine salvation is a witness of the Holy Spirit in your heart. A witness of the Holy Spirit in your heart. The Bible says the Spirit bears witness in our hearts that we are children of God. That Spirit will be crying, Abba, Father, you will know and you will know beyond doubt that you are a child of God. So number two way to strive is through sanctification and holy living. Sanctification and holy living. Beloved, after salvation, you must cry unto God to sanctify you and help you to get rid of every besetting sin. Hallelujah. Pray rigorously until you are sure that God has done it. If you go on the net, just took one painter, a Korean painter to hellfire on a tour. You may not believe it, <laughs> but that's the truth. And then she, to paint what she, had, she, she saw. If you see the picture she painted, it was horrible of people suffering hell. And just told her something, that everybody has some demons in, in his or her heart. That you pray, you must pray vigorously. And when you pray seriously to get rid of those demonic things in your heart, the angels will appear with sword in their hand and begin to deal with those demons. Demons of anger, demons of ego, demons of malice. It will be escorted, it will be expunged from your heart. And that is what is called the experience of sanctification. Hallelujah. So you must pray on seeing this thing, this dredges of sin, of, of impressing is, is expunged. And you are broken. Thereafter, you begin to live a lot of life. As from, that is a precept. You know, sanctification is both you know, instantaneous and gradual. It's instantaneous in the way that you will know the day God does it. Kanthar Kuman said that I know the day I died. Praise the Lord. It is also gradual in that you must grow in it daily. You must grow in it by watching your tongue. That I do what not put out of your tongue. Vain words. By watching your eyes. There does not be whole things that would, that would damage your spiritual eyes. By watching your ears. That you don't, you don't listen to gossip. By watching your thoughts. By watching the way you relate to people. Praise the Lord. Number three, where you, you strive, number three, to, uh, to, 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 to be on the narrow road, is begin to practice righteousness. Begin to practice righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God and right living before God. I repeat that again. Righteousness is right standing with God and right living with, uh, in, in God's presence, doing things that are right. So we just emphasize right standing. Right standing, that is righteousness begins with salvation, which is right standing with God. But it's, 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 and it's, it continues with right living, doing everything that is right before God. Hallelujah. As we begin to exercise ourselves to do things that are always right in God's eyes, God will make sure that He supplies the grace. And very soon, it will become your second nature. Hallelujah. As you begin to practice righteousness, it becomes your second nature to live right. Number four way to strive to be on a narrow way is manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Pray for and manifest the fruit of the Spirit is very, very important. It's not enough to speak in tongues and prophesy and do miracles or look for miracles. Exalt the fruit of the Spirit above the gifts because it is the fruit of the Spirit that will be used to judge us at the gate of heaven. All gifts will end on earth. Bible says it will cease. It's love that abides. Praise the Lord. It's a life of holiness and love that will be used to judge you at the gate of heaven. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, 
faith, meekness, temperance, against which there is no law. Praise the Lord. So begin to manifest the fruit of the Spirit as, a, as opposed to the works of the flesh. You pray for it and you manifest it. Number five thing you must do to strive is shun worldliness. Shun worldliness. The Bible says, friendness with, 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 with the world is enmity with God. Friendness with the world is enmity with God. You cannot be a friend of the world and be a friend of God at the same time. So we must show worldliness in every of its ramification. The world system is designed to make us worldly. You must fight it. A genuine Christian is fighting against three things. Number one, his own flesh. Number two, the devil. And number three, the world. The world system, what is the world? The world comprises of its people, its system, and the way of doing things. So you must shun every appearance of evil. You must shun worldly companionship. You must shun worldly dressing and attire. You must shun worldly pleasures. You must shun worldly amusements. Everything the world has to offer is enmity against God. Praise the Lord. That's why we read in John 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Love not the world. You know the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, love, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Praise the Lord. Number six thing you do to, to, to strive. Number six, number six. Number, the sixth thing you do to strive to be on the narrow way is shun secret sins. Shun secret sins. Beloved, shun every secret sin because it will take you out of the out of the narrow road. Men may not see it, God sees it. Hallelujah. Live sincerely. Exercise your conscience, void of offense, towards God and man. Live as if God is with you everywhere. Live as if God is there. Where is God? God is everywhere. Darkness, the Bible says darkness and light, they are the same before him. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Abstain from every, all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Acts chapter 24, verse 16, it says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. It's very important. Secret sin. That is what is destroying many Christians. Number seven, number seventh way to, the seventh way to, to strive to go a narrow road is attend a holiness church. Attend a holiness church. Bible believing, holiness, evangelical holiness church. Very, very important. The, the, the devil has modernized the church. He knows what God, what God hates because he lived in heaven for ages. So he, he knows. He is making people to serve God under God's anger. They think they are serving God, but they are doing modernity. Listen to this. You cannot be higher than the pulpits. You cannot be higher than the pulpits. Hallelujah. Second thing I want to tell you under this is you eventually become what you hear. You eventually become what you hear. That is why somebody said, change your church if your church is not changing you. Change your church if your church is not changing you. So many people are so, they are so glued to a particular church and their life is the same. Two years ago, three years ago, the same. They are not spiritual. They are cold. They are not here. Yeah, everything is in their life. They still continue to go to church because that particular church because of fear of man or what people will say. Or well, I've been here for the past twenty years. We love it. You have to be very careful. If you hear that in this particular hospital, people who have been who have been there any time they are sick, many people have died. When next you are sick, will you like will you like to go there? May God help you in Jesus' name. The tragedy of our time is that Satan has changed the focus of the church. Instead of pastors and preachers preparing their people for the rapture, which is very, very imminent, which is, I mean, the time is so short. Under this little time that you are giving, very short time that you are used to, that are supposed to use to prepare people for rapture, they are busy preaching prosperity. They are busy preaching and deliverance. They are busy preaching things of now. May God help us in Jesus' name. Jesus appeared to somebody and said that he has said it before in, in the Bible. That any pastor that is still specializing on preaching prosperity or, you know, anything now that is not preparing his people for rapture is a fake prophet. 
beloved, and there are so many faith prophets around. May God help us in Jesus' name. Say amen. So all these prosperity preachers, beware of them. And many of them, they are the ones prospering. Their church members are becoming poorer. That's the, that's the irony. They are just raking money with their, with their preachings, living like a millionaire. Hallelujah. So you need to attend a holiness church. Attend a church that lays emphasis on sanctification, holiness, rapture, and so on and so forth. Instead of emphasis on the on mundane things of, of this life, run for your dear life. Number eight thing that you must do to strive to be on the narrow way is rigorous prayer. Rigorous prayer. Beloved, this is the key to receiving grace for the journey. Nobody can live a holy life in their own power. But as you stay in God's presence in one to two hours every day, asking for grace, God will pour down the grace. Let your prayer be centered on, on, on holy living. Let your prayer be centered on, on sanctification. Let your prayer be centered on, on deliverance, deliverance from flesh and, and the world. Let your prayer be centered on things of heaven, not just on mundane things and money and prosperity. May God help you in Jesus' name. Say amen. Say amen. Number nine thing that you use to strive, number nine thing is study of the world. Rigorous study of the world. Daily rigorous study of the world. Beloved, you cannot afford to joke with this daily intake of the word of God. This is one of the powerful tools that God uses to cleanse us. It fortifies our inner man against temptation. It, it, it sheds light on our way. It emboldens us against Satan and sin. It gives grace from above. Psalm 119 verse 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking it according to your word. To your word. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking it according to God's word. Psalm 119 verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against. Those who read the word regularly and pray seriously, you will see that they will be free from sin. Hallelujah. Number 10, occupy for him. Occupy for the master. Beloved, those, the time is so short, and you must get involved in aggressive evangelism. God is delighted in those who win souls for him regularly and constantly bringing souls to the narrow road. And he helps them and fortifies them. Romans chapter 10, verse 15 says, How beautiful are the feet of him that, that preach the gospel of peace and brings glad tidings and bring um, glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. It is very, it is, God is delighted with those that preach the gospel. Number 11, 11 thing you must do to strive to be on the narrow road is do all your restrictions and reconcile with everybody. Do all your restrictions, reconcile with everybody and pay your debts. Reconcile with everybody, forgive all, and pay all your debts. Don't have a grudge against anybody. If you listen to me, at the gate of heaven, if you have anything against anybody, you'll not be able to enter. If anybody has anything against you, you'll not be able to enter. So reconcile with everybody. Hallelujah. And pay all your debts. The Bible says, oh, no man, anything. Number 12. Number 12 thing you must do to strive to, uh, to be on the narrow way is re realize that the time is short. The time is short. Beloved, whatever amends you want to make in your life, do it now. Whatever amends you want to make in your life, do it now. One of the people that Jesus took to heaven, he said he told him that whatever you want to do for God, do it now. There may not be time again. Anything you want to do. Some people, they plan to reconcile with somebody in, in future. They died uh, a week earlier. Praise the Lord. If there's anything in your life that may hinder you from seeing Jesus Christ, cry it now. Anytime from now, the cutting will draw on this age. Hallelujah. Finally, number 13, remember, crossover is possible. Remember that crossover is possible. Praise the Lord. You must realize that the mere fact that you're on the narrow road now does not mean that you are going to end on the narrow road. It is what, where you are at the end of your life, either by depth or by rapture, that will determine where you spend eternity. Some people, they live well. Just a few months to their death, they, they cross over to the broad road and end in hell. That will not be a portion. It's not my portion in the name of Jesus. So, listen to this. 
Satan does not give up on any man. Until he, Satan still thinks he can succeed on any man until that man crosses over, over Jordan. On, uh, uh, I mean, uh, beyond, the, beyond the veil, until, until he dies or he goes by rapture. He still thinks he can succeed on you. That is why you must be on guard. Because it can strike at any moment. You must watch. You must pray. That's why the, 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 um, Paul the Apostle that wrote half of the New Testament said, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, I keep under my body and bring it into, into, into subjection. Lest by enemies, when I preach to others, I my church be cast. By God's grace, you and me, we are going to walk on narrow way. By the grace of God, we shall end our journey in heaven. By God's grace, God will deliver us from every depravity. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the words we have been handing for the past five weeks. I thank you, Lord, because these words came from heaven. I pray that this, our people will not take it lightly, that they're going to use these words, oh Lord, to purge themselves. And that these words not stand as a test, as a, to testify against them. Rather, it will justify them. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, share this uh, message. Share it and share it. Let it go viral. Hallelujah. And also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our page. God bless you.